In this video, you'll learn how to automate some of the processes in your inbox using Zapier's Gmail integration. Now, provided you're using Gmail, uh, this integration is one of the most handy ones that Zapier has. There are a whole bunch of pretty cool workflows that you can create that will have you spending less time in your inbox. Now, this is not a Zapier tutorial. If you've never used Zapier before, you'll probably want to go and check out my Zapier tutorial video first, which I will link up in the description and it'll be showing on the screen now. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and Content Snare. And if you'd like to learn more ways on how to automate your business and get more done in less time, please hit that subscribe button below. But let's get started. The first thing you want to do is come over to the Gmail integrations page on Zapier. Now you can see the URL here, uh, but I've also linked this up in the video description below. This is where you can find out about all the different things you can do with Gmail in Zapier. So scroll right down the bottom. And this is where you see the triggers, actions, and searches, which are the building blocks for workflows in Zapier. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of them because you can see there's quite a lot. We've got seven triggers, six actions, two searches. I'm just gonna go through the main ones that I tend to use and that I have used for my clients in the past. As far as the triggers go, the ones I see as the most important are new email matching search. This is by far the most important one. Uh, and then the new labeled email and new starred email. So you can create some pretty cool workflows with these. So new email matching search, uh, it's an amazing trigger that can help you process emails or get alerts for very specific emails. So one that I see a lot with my clients is if they receive leads via email. And there are a lot of different ways that might happen, but the one I see quite a lot is if they're using a directory site like OneFlare. So there are tons of these websites where uh, they just connect businesses with people looking for services. So for example, if you were looking for a plumber, you'd come here and you know search for a plumber, uh, put in your postcode or where you're from, and then get quotes for whatever work uh, you want to do. And then OneFlare will then email the businesses that uh, they request quotes from, and it comes in like this. So obviously I've had to blur out a bunch of the personal information here, but it's just an email that comes from the company, from the directory saying, hey, someone's requested a quote from you. And a lot of these websites operate through email. Like they'll only send you an email to say, uh, this is the person you need to provide a quote for. And honestly, it's a pretty crappy system if you want to respond to leads quickly. So what you could do is create a workflow in Zapier that says when an email matches a really specific term, so in this case, it might be auto quote submitted for accounting job uh, as our search. And the email it's come from is oneflare.com. So maybe we do a search like this. Something like that. And you can see here, we've got uh, those three emails that have come in. So that's how you test this out. If you can get a search working in Gmail using that bar, now you can get a, an alert for every single uh, email that matches that search. And then maybe we want to get an SMS for all of those emails. So that way you don't have to check your inbox. Uh, you get an immediate SMS as soon as any of those leads come in. So that is a pretty cool workflow. Uh, another example is Harrow. That's H-A-R-O, help a reporter out. It's a pretty cool website where you can get notifications about journalists looking for expertise. And they, they put out requests that look like this. So it's saying here are a bunch of journalists. All of these are asking for some experts to weigh in. And if you wanted to weigh in on one of these, like for example, I might want to reply to ones about automation. So I might want to do a search for Harrow Automation and any of those Harrow emails that match that search, I want to get a notification for. Maybe I want to add it to my Trello or to-do list to follow up on later. So as you can see, that new email matching search is just super powerful. You can basically get alerts or trigger workflows based on emails that come into your inbox matching a specific search. And we'll see how to set this up later. Just a quick note before we move on, there is another tool you can use with Zapier to take this to the next level. Like in those OneFlare emails, you could actually pull out specific details from the body of this email, like emails and phone numbers, and 
forward those over to your CRM and actually create a contact based on this email. But that's using a different tool called the Zapier email parser and I will link that up in the description below if you wanna check that out. So back over here, the next two I wanna talk about are new labeled email and new starred emails. So these are great triggers for helping you process emails. Maybe you have a system where every time you star an email in Gmail, so that means clicking uh, the star button here, maybe every time you star an email, it means that you, that email needs your attention later. So you could say, when I star an email, add the email to my to-do list. That's a workflow you could set up in Zapier. Or you could do something like at the end of a week, show me a list of all the emails that I starred this week. To do that, you need to use a tool called Digest by Zapier, uh, which I cover in my course, and I'll link that up below. You can also do the same with labels. So you could say, when I uh, choose an email and label it with a certain email, so maybe you have a receipts label, and you could say, every email that you label with receipts, you automatically send that to a receipts folder in your Google Drive or Dropbox. So you can kind of use both starring and labels as a kind of automatic filing system, or really you can fire off any workflows you want based on these just by applying a label. And back over here, the only other one I see being used regularly is new attachment. So you might wanna create a workflow that says, every time there's a new attachment I receive in Gmail, file it away in my Google Drive or Dropbox. I don't do this, but I've seen some of my clients uh, that want to have that uh, backup of all the attachments they've received. Now let's move over to the actions. The main ones here are create draft and send email. Create draft is nice because you might have a workflow that says, whenever someone signs up for my product, create a draft in my Gmail. And that way, if you'd like to send personalized emails to people that sign up for your product, then you can just open your drafts folder, go through each one and add uh, like a personal message or maybe even drop in a video link like from Loom and, and then hit send. So this saves the time of working out who to send emails to and copying, pasting email addresses into Gmail. They'll just all be sitting there in your drafts folder ready for sending uh, and modification from you. Send email is basically the same as creating a draft, except that instead of saving it in your drafts folder, it sends it right away. So in the past, I've used this with a tool like Airtable. So this is basically just a spreadsheet of all the people that have canceled their subscription with us. And then I can look in this column here, and if I change this to ask, Zapier will pick this up and send an email directly to this person just with a quick follow-up about uh, why they canceled and if we can jump on a call. Uh, and the last one I think worth mentioning is add label to email. So this can be handy uh, to indicate that a workflow has already processed a message. In that example before where we looked at the uh, OneFlare lead here, the workflow might say, when an email from OneFlare arrives, send me an SMS and then apply a label to this just to say that it was processed. So you might have like a, a label that says processed or something, um, just so you know that Zapier has done its magic on this email. So that's the last one I think worth mentioning there. So now let's actually set some of these up. I'm gonna open my Zapier account and create a new Zap. So let's start with the email matching search. So we're gonna type in Gmail as the app and the trigger event is new email matching search. Continue. Choose your Gmail account that you wanna fire this on and continue. And this is where we put in the exact search value that we were playing around with before. So in this case, it might be Harrow Automation. You might wanna get a bit more specific and actually put in that Harrow address uh, and then the word automation. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go here and go, there's the email address and automation and continue. And then we can test this to see which emails it will bring in. So it looks like it's found one there. For now, let's just go ahead and continue. So we're gonna say every time uh, an email matches that search string in our Gmail, we're gonna do something. And in this case, all I wanna do is put it in my to-do list, which is my Trello account. So I'm gonna create a card, which is kind of the same as creating a task. Choose uh, my Trello account. A board. 
And then we have to say what the task is. So it's going to be a uh, new Harrow automation email. And it might be a bit much to put that entire email, like this is pretty long, right? So you don't really wanna put that entire email <laughs> in your to-do list. So what you might wanna do instead is just say, uh, yep, there's a new, new email to check out and just drop in the link to that email, which is there. So what happens then, that's gonna drop this into my to-do list with that URL ready to go. And I click that and it's gonna open up that email uh, in my browser. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue and just show you what this looks like. Open up my Trello. Uh, so this is the list we're gonna add it to here. You can see some old uh, testing information there. But if I jump back to that workflow and test and review, so it says a card was sent to Trello. There it is, it's just appeared. So we click that and it's given us a link. So if I open uh, that email, it should go directly to that email in my inbox. So I can have a look through and find uh, the question where someone was asking about automation and see if I can answer it. So that's pretty much it for this workflow. At that point, all you need to do is turn the workflow on and it's going to do that every single time it finds an email. Just quickly show you another example with this. So here's another workflow I've created that says whenever an email matches this, so it's looking for the word like Jira with square brackets and then the quote mentioned you on and my email address. So if we have a quick look at that in, in email, one of these emails comes in every time someone on our team mentions me in a comment in Jira. So that's what this triggers on. And then it's just saying, send me a message in Slack. So I found myself missing uh, notifications when I got mentioned in uh, our project management system. So now it just actually sends me a direct message in Slack every time uh, one of those emails comes in just to make sure I don't miss it because I spend a lot more time in Slack. Now let's create a new workflow so you can see how you would set this up with uh, new labeled emails, right? So let's use that example of receipts again. So we're gonna trigger on Gmail. We're gonna trigger when new labeled email happens. And the label we want is receipts, because that's one I've created earlier. We'll test. So we'll see what the last email was that I labeled receipts. Looks like it's pulled something in there. You can see it's pulled through a few different emails. So you could have a look through there and have a look. Uh, but then maybe we just want to dump this into uh, Google Drive. I'm going to create a new file from text. Now you might also want to upload a file if you are doing attachments. Uh, I know in this case that email doesn't actually have any attachments. It's just an email based receipt. So instead I'm going to create a file from text. Uh, choose my account. And then we're gonna create a file name, which might just be the subject of the email. And then the file content will be the body. So that way it's gonna create a file. Each time we label an email with that receipts label, it's gonna create a file from it uh, in whatever folder we choose. You can go ahead and choose the right folder and drive for your account. But that's really all there is to it. So at this point, uh, you've seen an example of the new labeled email and the new email matching search. Uh, new start email is very similar to new labeled email. You just don't pick the label. It's just any start email. So now let's move on to actions. And I want to show you the create draft and send email. I'm not going to create these from scratch because I think by now you can see how to create a workflow. I'm just going to open one that I've created earlier. So this is that example I spoke about where when I update this status column here to say ask, it will go and email the person uh, on this spreadsheet row. So jumping back here, we have a trigger that says when a row is updated in Airtable, we're looking in the customer interviews table. And then I have a filter here that says we will only continue this workflow if the status column matches ask and the email sent column does not equal true. So once we send an email, we'll put a tick box in this column. Uh, so that way the automation doesn't send an email twice to that person. Uh, but back over here, 
if this filter passes, so we've uh, set the status to ask and the email does not match true, uh, just jump down to the next step, which is to send that email in Gmail. So uh, here we've selected Gmail and the action event is send email, just like any other step that you would have set up before. You would have chosen your account and then we send the email in Gmail. So we're just giving it a to address, which comes directly out of that record in Airtable. We're saying who it's from. So this is just gonna be your own email address, of course. And then uh, we just give it a subject and a body. It's pretty simple, right? Just like sending a normal email. So you write the subject in there and you write the body in here and you can use placeholders from that Airtable, right? So if you wanna put their name in here, if you wanna put any other information from that trigger, uh, you can just drop it straight into the email body here. Once you've got the email ready, you just go down and hit continue and turn the workflow on. So then that's saying every time uh, a row is updated and the value is ask in here, then we go ahead and send that email. The thing I'm missing here is to go back and update that row in Airtable to put the uh, tick in here, just so it knows that we've sent the email and we don't do it twice. Okay, so I hope those examples have given you some cool ideas on how you can begin automating your Gmail account using Zapier, as well as got you started on actually how to implement it. I know that if you haven't used Zapier before, that these videos can go pretty quick uh, and, and can be a little bit hard to follow, but if that's you, just head over to my Zapier tutorial video, which again is linked up below and uh, will be showing on the screen now. That'll give you a overview from the very start, even if you've never used Zapier before. All right, that is it for this video. If you'd like to learn more ways to automate your business and get more done in less time, hit that red subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video.